Hello, everybody. Nice to have you with us for the second session of Lesson Thirty One. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our program. 观众朋友们好，今天是第三十一课的第二讲。今天这一讲，我们要复习一下上讲我们学过的课文，然后呢，我们要接着讲一下见解英语。此外，我们还要学习一下对话。Okay, now it's time for the questions and answers. Here is the first question: What are some of the examples given in the text about people's love for physical challenges? What are some of the examples given in the text about people's love for physical challenges? The physical challenges people love include. How fast they can run, how high they can climb, and how deep they can dive. The physical challenges people love include how fast they can run, how high they can climb, and how deep they can dive. What is said about the Olympics according to the text? What is said about the Olympics according to the text? The Olympics is the international sports competition which millions of people enjoy every four years. The Olympics is the international sports competition which millions of people enjoy every four years. What kind of excitement? For instance, do people also enjoy? What kind of excitement, for instance, do people also enjoy? People also enjoy, for instance, the excitement of climbing mountains, or of racing in a car around a track. People also enjoy, for instance, the excitement of climbing mountains. Or of racing in a car around a track. What are the two reasons why people enjoy challenges? What are the two reasons why people enjoy challenges? The two reasons are curiosity and the personal feeling of success or achievement. The two reasons are. Curiosity, and the personal feeling of success or achievement. What do we know about Leonardo da Vinci? What do we know about Leonardo da Vinci? He was a famous Italian artist of the fifteenth century, as well as an inventor and a scientist. He was a famous Italian artist of the 15th century, as well as an inventor and a scientist. What does the example of Leonardo da Vinci show? What does the example of Leonardo da Vinci show? His example shows. It is possible to enjoy different kinds of challenges, including intellectual ones. His example shows it is possible to enjoy different kinds of challenges, including intellectual ones. What do we know about the first pyramid that the Egyptians built thousands of years ago? What do we know about the first pyramid that the Egyptians built thousands of years ago? We know it took four hundred thousand men twenty years to build using six million tons of rock. We know it took four hundred thousand men twenty years to build. Using six million tons of rock. 
Now the last question. What are some of the challenges that we face today? What are some of the challenges that we face today? Some of the challenges are conquering many diseases, developing new kinds of transportation, and finding new forms of energy. Some of the challenges are conquering many diseases, developing new kinds of transportation, and finding new forms of energy. That's all for the questions and answers on the text. We'll move on shortly to a section on grammar dealing with the indirect speech. 好，课文的问答练习我们就做到这里。接下去呢，我们要进入语法的学习，讲一讲间接英语的用法。今天我们要讲讲怎样把疑问句和祈使句由直接英语改变为间接英语。我们先来看看把特殊疑问句改变为间接英语时要做些什么呢？首先，要把时态、代词、时间状语和地点状语做相应的调整，然后呢，还要把疑问句的语序改变为陈述句的语序。好，下面我们来看一下例子。What were you doing behind the curtains? John asked Jane. 请看看他的间接英语形式。John asked Jane what she had been doing behind the curtains. John asked Jane. What she had been doing behind the curtains. 我们再看一个例句。How can I get there? He asked me. 把它变为间接英语时要这样改。He asked me how he could get there. He asked me how he could get there. 如果是一般问句、选择问句或者是反义问句，在变为间接英语时，除了上面提到的变化以外呢，还要在英语前面加上引导词 whether 或者 if。我们来看一下例句。Do you live here? She asked. 变为间接英语。She asked me whether I lived there. She asked me if I lived there. 好，我们再看下一句。Will the train be late? He asked. 他的间接英语形式是。He asked whether the train would be late. He asked if the train would be late. 我们再来看一句。Did you tell her that or not? He asked. 这是一个选择问句，变为间接英语时应该是这样的。He asked me whether I had told her that or not. He asked me if I had told her that or not. 好，下面我们看反义问句的例子。You have met her, haven't you? He asked. 变为间接英语。He asked me whether I had met her. He asked me if I had met her. 以上呢，我们讲的是疑问句的例子。如果引述的是祈使句。那么，句子的谓语部分一般要用这样的词组，比如 ，ask one to， tell one to， 或者 order one to。下面我们来看一些例子。Please don't disturb me, he said. 
把它变为间接英语。He asked me not to disturb him. He asked me not to disturb him. 这里 ask one to 表示请求。我们再看下一句。Be careful, I said to her. 变为间接英语。I told her to be careful. I told her to be careful. 这里 tell one to 也表示请求。Take her away, he shouted at them. 变为间接英语。He ordered them to take her away. He ordered them to take her away. 这里 order one to 表示命令的口气。这里我们要指出一点，刚才我们所说的这种 ask one to tell one to 或者 advise one to 这样的结构呢，也可以适用一些表示建议、请求。或者劝告的问句，比如 ，Will you be quiet, please? She said. 变为间接英语。She asked me to be quiet. She asked me to be quiet. 我们看另一句。Could you lend me your bike? He said. 他的间接英语形式可以这样变。He asked me to lend him my bike. He asked me to lend him my bike. 我们再看另一个例子。Why don't you try? He said. 他的间接英语形式可以是这样说。He advised me to try. He advised me to try. Advised, 表示劝告，建议某人。Now that we've finished explaining the grammar to you, we'd like to give you some exercises. But first, please listen carefully to our instructions. 刚才我们对语法做了讲解，接下来呢，我们要来做一些练习。这部分的语法练习分三部分，请大家分别将陈述句形式、疑问句形式和祈使句形式变为间接英语。好，我们先来看看把陈述句变为间接英语的练习。Number one, we'll be through in a day or two," said the man in charge of the job. The man in charge of the job said they would be through in a day or two. Number two. We are busy preparing for the examinations, the students said. The students said they were busy preparing for the examinations. Number three. I have to help support my family," said Willie. Willie said he had to help support his family. Number four. I borrowed the bicycle from a friend of mine," Mary said. Mary said she had borrowed the bicycle from a friend of hers. 好，接下来我们请大家把疑问句形式的直接英语变为间接英语，尤其请大家注意语序的变化。Number one, what do you think of the book you borrowed from me? Mary asked me.
Mary asked me what I thought of the book I had borrowed from her. Number two. Where are we to meet Joe? Betty asked. Betty asked where they were to meet Joe. Number three. How many pages have you read today? John asked me. John asked me how many pages I had read that day. Number four. Has Kitty promised to come tonight? Henry asked Jack. Henry asked Jack whether Kitty had promised to come that night. 最后，我们要来将祈使句改为间接英语，请大家注意句子中引述动词的变化。Number one, learn the dialogue by heart, the teacher said. The teacher told the students to learn the dialogue by heart. Number two. You mustn't be so careless in your written work, his teacher said. His teacher told him not to be so careless in his written work. Number three. Let's start at once," said the group leader. The group leader gave the order to start at once. Number four. Help the student to look up the book in the catalogue. The librarian told his assistant. The librarian told his assistant to help the student look up the book in the catalog. Well, that's all for the exercises. We hope you got all the answers correct. Coming up soon, we have the dialogue for you. 好，语法练习我们就做到这儿。大家是不是都做对了？接下来呢，我们要学习一篇对话。The dialogue is a short conversation between two neighbors, Sonia Rice and Oscar Crane. Right. First, let's read the dialogue to you. Please listen carefully. At the neighbors. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Rice. What can I do for you? Didn't you say you were leaving on another trip in the morning? Yes, going up through Central America. I just stopped by to remind you to leave a key for me. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about it. It's very good of you to keep an eye on the house when I'm away. 好，现在我来讲解一下对话中的。一些语言点，我们先看一下标题。At the neighbors， 这里的意思是在邻居家中，它相当于 at the neighbors home， 省略了 home 这一名词。这是 apostrophe s 所有格结构中省略被修饰名词的用法。下面呢，我们要看一下在哪几种情况下可以采用这种省略形式。被修饰的名词表示某人的家，比如刚才对话中的例子，又比如 ，Shall we meet at his brother's tomorrow afternoon? 
，明天下午我们在他哥哥家碰头好吗？另一种情况，被修饰名词表示教堂，或者学校，以及其他公共建筑物，比如。Did you visit St. Paul's while you were in London? 你在伦敦的时候有没有参观过圣保罗大教堂？这里的 Saint Paul's 后面省略了 cathedral， 意思是天主教大教堂。还有一种情况，被修饰的名词表示某个店铺，比如 I go to the barber's once a month。我每月去理一次发。Do you often go to McDonald's? 你常去麦当劳吃快餐吗？对话中有一个很有用的动词短语 ，stop by， 意思是顺路走访，或者是顺便拜访。下面我们来看几个例句。He stopped by the post office on his way home. 他回家的路上顺便去了趟邮局。对话中还有一个动词短语是 remind somebody to do something， 意思是提醒某人做某事。那么提醒某人某事，要说 remind somebody of something。下面我们来看一下例句。He reminded me of the promise I had made. 他提醒我别忘了许下的诺言。Okay, that's it for the explanation. 观众朋友们，到今天为止，我们已经学完了许国章电视英语的上册。从下一讲开始，将有另外两位教师来继续主持播讲后五十讲的节目。我们希望大家在今后的学习中更上一层楼。Okay, good luck and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.